I'd like to welcome everyone to the program on US-Japan relations seminar today. It's my great pleasure to introduce Professor Nobuko Nagase, who will be our seminar speaker. Professor Nagase is a visiting scholar in the Department of Sociology at Harvard on, through January, and she's Professor of Labor Economics and Social Policy at Ochano Mizu Daigaku. She's a labor economist by training. She got her BA, MA, and PhD in economics at Todai. Professor Nagase studies the gender wage gap, social policies surrounding the family and gender issues, fertility and the family, and in particular, how Japanese employment practices and social policies, including pension policies, childcare, long-term care insurance and the tax system affect Japanese families and family formation. Uh, when I printed out her CV, I realized it's 16 pages long. <laughs> she has um, published very prolifically, if that's an appropriate adverb, and uh, has been on many um, government committees and has been a visiting professor at many universities. So she said she has a very, very long and rich CV. Among her recent publications include Abe's Womenomics Policy, Did It Reduce the Gender Gap in Management? And that was published in the Political Economy of the Abe Government and Abenomics Reforms, edited by Takeo Hoshi and Philip Lipsky. Um, Nobuko and I also published a paper together a few years ago in demographic research, and in that paper we looked at the household division of labor in Japan and the probability that couples will progress from one to two children. So it linked our, our interests in fertility and unpaid labor in the home. Currently, Professor Nagase is a principal investigator on the Future of Unpaid Work Project, funded by J I'm JST Ristex with Oxford, Oxford University, um, uh, an Internet Institute team at Oxford as collaborators. He's held, as I said, a number of governmental appointments, such as being a member of the Special Committee on the Council for Gender Equality in the Japanese Cabinet Office, a member of the Japanese Tax Commission, and a member of the Statistics Committee for the Japanese Government, among many others. Since 2012, she's been a member of the Science Council of Japan, where she has led a research project on the status of women in the humanities and social sciences. And I, I, I'll add a personal note that it's always a delight to have <laughs> Nobuko visit Harvard uh, for her intellect and her enthusiasm and her great sense of humor and the fact that she's, as an economist, very willing to hang out with sociologists. So um, it's always such a pleasure to have her here. Uh, this seminar is part of the special series on policy innovations in crises supported by a Japan Foundation grant. And the seminar is co-sponsored today by the Reischauer Institute of Japanese Studies and the Department of Sociology. Uh, I'll say a word about the next seminar. Next week, we have an associates panel on opposition party coordination and Japanese democracy. So same time, same place, and we look forward to seeing you then. So I'll now turn things over to Nobuko, and this is the um, title of her talk, Artificial Intelligence, Digital Technologies, Automation, and the Future of Domestic Work. Awesome. Thank you, Mary, for such a wonderful introduction. It's uh, over. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and I'm most happy to be here. Uh, I was here eight years ago, and it was my first overseas after I graduated from university, actually. 
uh, and it was such a learning experience and I really enjoyed it. And thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity again to present. Today I'm going to present on this uh, uh, joint work with Oxford University. But before going there, oops, how can we uh, push that? I'll do it. Ah, you thank go. you. You just have to. Did I hear us. something? Oh, no. ah. oh to, to introduce, just to introduce myself. I had this slide in my Japanese uh, uh, lectures, so I, I just went thought I would show this to you. Uh, I don't. I mostly write on journals, but last year I was able to publish three books, either co-authoring or co-edit uh, co-editing. And the first one is uh, "Declining Birth and Female Life Course" with many demographers, and the next one is "Labor Economics" with special attention to female labor and household uh, division of labor, household production as well. And the third one is the edited volume of the Social Science Council that. Uh, Science Council that uh, that um, Mary just introduced. So I have I myself have had a difficult time trying to get over navigating with family and uh, navigating through this academic world. That uh, I have been very enthusiastic at this topic. First, uh, I will talk about the background and motivation. Many of the Japanese uh, uh, know this, but maybe, maybe I can just go go very quickly how why this this theme is very important in the Japanese political economy and economy and family. And next, I will talk about a joint project with the UK and Japan. And we have several projects ongoing, but I will talk about two projects, one in Delphi survey and another in consumer experiment. Okay, background. Uh, well, pending social problem in Japan is the large gender wage gap, declining fertility and population aging and declining labor force. Well, uh, many of you must be very aware, very familiar with this, uh, this uh, age wage profile of by gender and educational level. The green line is university graduated male, age profile wage, monthly wage income, and the red is university graduated female, whereas the blue line is high school graduated male and orange line is high school graduated females. And uh, so there is a large gender gap. But actually this gender gap is smaller than what they really are because this is only for ordinary employee, mostly full-time employees. So if you look at the, uh, how the income gap is so large among the married, this is used by labor force survey and the horizontal axis is income, income category. And this is from 2000, 2000 uh, 2010, 2016. And you can see that non-working married female has declined a bit over 40 to 30%. However, the, 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 those with income is the, the, there is a peak in 100, 1 million yen per year, which is very low, lower than the tax threshold. And uh, on the other hand, Male, if you are married, at least would have income maybe over 4 million yen. So there is a large income disparity between men and, men and women in Japan. Uh, however, the, this is the change in employment over time from 1988 to 2018. Uh, percentage of those young males and females by educational group in non-standard employment. So in 1988, almost 90% both male and non-married females both were in seishain group, that is uh, work without termination of contract. However, uh, as, as the year went on, the percentage of uh, university graduated women in non-standard employment has peaked in 2000, around 2006 and seven. And for high school graduated females, it's still increasing. It's only about 50% of female high school graduates who have seishain job. And the rest have non-seishain job, part-time, arubaito, 
if you have this part job and if you're a high, a high school graduate, it's even better. I mean, it's among the better uh, better if you have dispatched and many have part of time or other vital jobs. And uh, uh, high school graduate as well. So uh, even though for the merits, there is a strong uh, income uh, gender division of labor within household, well, the youth in the youth, the, 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 the labor uh, con um, condition is deteriorating both for males and females. And uh, with the government policy, you can see this is from 2002 to 2017, again, using labor for survey of Japan, uh, uh, with the increase of, of uh, government policy, trying to uh, make female work continue even though one have a child, it's having some impact. So you can see that among the university graduated female, for those who have child aged zero to three, one child in 90, 2017, about 50% started to work continue as formal employees say shine, whereas it used to be like 20%. The rest is working part-time or not working. So uh, among the 100% who has small children, for university graduated females, the government policy had some effect and they are starting to work continue when they have child. But touch effect is very low for high school graduate and for uh, uh, college, a two-year college university or uh, technical college university graduate. They will be between high school and university. As a result, this is a very thin picture. Uh, the horizontal line is line is birth cohort. Well there is increase in childlessness in Japan. Uh, well, if you are married, used to be, it has to be very gender divided. You know, you, your husband's income has to be high and women do almost household work. Though there are changes seen in the university graduated group, there is little change in the lower educated. And of course, university graduates too sometimes do not get good job. And what's happening is that decline in marriage, decline in childbearing, and increase in childlessness. For the birth cohort of 1970, the childlessness has increased nearly 30%. And what's going to happen in the future? We had just had a new uh, fertility survey. I didn't bring it here, but that shows that the intention to marry got even lower and intention to having children got even lower among the non-married. So this is a, the projection of aging society in Japan um, uh, in 2017. And the, 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 we, the government is now having another projection on the way, but I suspect the projection will be worse than what it, it was in 2017 because of the lower intention of getting married and lower intention of having children. So, uh, so this leads to the, the why this study is important for Japan. Reducing opportunity cost of forming a family, cost of childcare and their care is important and increasing Male involvement at home and female involvement in work are important policy goals for Japan because of the severe demographic change and also change in the labor market and also change in the values of the young people. So, so here is about our project, uh, uh, Japan. It's a joint project with uh, uh, Japan and UK. I'm principal investigator, Professor Omori Yoshiaki of uh, Yokohama uh, uni uh, University, National University, and Emiko Usui of Hitotsubashi University, Setsuya Fukuda of uh, National Institute of Population Social Security Research, uh, Riki Yamatsukura of Newfound University, Yuji Ota and Yoshiko Shimada of Autonomous University are our groups. And UK is uh, uh, led by Helko Ekaterina, professor, and Billy Lerdombiate and Lucy, who all are from uh, uh, Oxford University Internet Institute. Yeah. 
to, to just give a very short review of the future of work literature, uh, maybe you know Frey and Osborne published in 2013, which said that 47% of total U.S. employment is in the high risk of this category and potentially automobile. And right after then, Nomura Institute did survey with uh, uh, Frey and Osborne using Japanese data, and they came to a conclusion that 49% of total Japanese employment is in the high risk category. Uh, also, uh, Alter uh, at, and other, other researchers has had task, task approach and from early 2000, and they, they found that because of the internet, because of the computer, uh, the, the middle job that used to be that used to support middle income families were now being uh, exported or uh, offshored to low income countries that there is because of the computer uh, there is a rise of high education people getting higher wage and uh, lower uh, education people will still stay at home country who are lower income and the middle middle income families income has dropped and this research has had much impact also and it's the same methods is taken in Europe and in Japan also however there is almost no literature on future of unpaid work and how AI and other digital devices may affect unpaid work so that's what uh, uh, Dr. Hautog and myself had been very much interested how it will change the future of family and it may change the future of labor too, future of female labor too, and even child rearing and also old age care. So uh, the first we, what we did was a Delphi survey. We asked uh, experts uh, how they viewed the future of domestic work. And the next one, we did consumer experiment. Would one use outsourcing it at different wage hours and prices? That's a big net survey. First, I will talk about the Delphi survey. It's one is already published on web and the Japanese version is not yet published, uh, uh, but you can see it on our website. Well, Delphi said survey, you first make conceptualization. We conceptualize domestic work into 17 categories using time use survey in UK and time use survey in Japan. We look at the definitions, we harmonize it and made as 17 domestic tasks. And then at round one, we asked experts uh, what uh, about this automation uh, score from zero to hundred percent. How much more automation do you think will be possible within five years and ten years? And then uh, we made means and distributions and asked those who who had very uh, extreme predictions uh, why they answer that way. And then we gave back the answers to to the second round to all the researchers and came to a conversion of predictions that you don't have to change or you can change. But it was, it is not that big sample size, but uh, we used our, it, for Japan, we used our internal network, UK internal network, as well as list of experts to obtain academia, R&D and business. Because Fraid and Osborne used mostly academia and they did not show what the 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 what what prediction how, what their prediction is based on uh, on the occupational automation. Uh, this was really Lechtenbiata's idea to to see if there should be any predictional difference between gender and between the experts. Uh, in academia, in corporate business, uh, corporate uh, engineering, or uh, business including venture capital and marketing. And the result was, uh, well, 27% uh, automation altogether and 39% automation together in 10 years. And this is the aggregate for UK and Japan, a woman, UK and Japan about 26.8%, but men rather different between UK and Japan. UK had higher automation score than Japan, 
and women in 10 years, more automation, but about the same again in the UK, there is some automation score difference between experts in Japan and UK. So I was rather interested in why Japanese experts were not predicting high automation, because I, I suppose that if you have higher automation vision, maybe you will be more ex you know, excited to make the change. Whereas if, if you have lower automation, you may, might not want to change, do the R&D. So this is the 12 among 17, where the difference was statistically significant. For example, this is cleaning house. Well, uh, UK, 41% uh, of uh, experts replied automation in five years. Whereas Japan, 28%. And for female experts, there was no statistical difference between Japan and UK. Well, laundry, the, the same, same as well, ironing, gardening, house and car maintenance, grocery shopping, non grocery shopping, service use, physical care of child, um, a teaching a child, interacting with a child. Uh, accompanying and escorting a child. Well, th this was not a statistical significant. There was the significance was in female and uh, adult caring. So it, it, I, we became interested in why there was such difference between UK and Japanese males. Mm -hmm. And also we asked about uh, the price range in, of the future to the experts, which Frey Nordsbone did not have. And in the pre-interview, many experts told us that it's not easy to predict the price. Therefore, we had a very wide price range uh, with zero added for, for, uh, for the five options. And interestingly, uh, Japanese experts predicted uh, with higher price range was much lower compared with UK. And this was not limited to male and male alone. Female too had lower price range as we compared with UK experts. And I did a regression because age group was a bit different. So we controlled for age. And what we found was that Japanese male experts in R&D, that is corporate engineers, were had a very low uh, prediction about automation of domestic chore. And uh, this is, uh, because this is not random sampling, we are not sure if this persists, we have different samples. But uh, this is some of the reasons that we suppose that that might be the cause. Well, Japanese males, due to long work hours, often delegate domestic work to their spouse at their spouse's respectable work sphere, in a, in a sense, respect their spouse and do not get into the domestic chore task. Uh, this was ba based on some pre-interviews. I did some pre-interview to an uh, AI person in Japanese enterprise, and he was very much interested in his work in uh, AI, but when I asked him about domestic work uh, automation, he said, oh, that's what my wife does with two children. <laughs> and he, he really didn't know actually what there was going on at home. So, so uh, on the other hand, female experts were really interested, including female engineers. But what they told me was that they don't know if they can persuade consumers and maybe their boss whether to that, you know, what mothers can do can be paid off by, by asking price. Mm -hmm. I mean... Can can we gather that big much big data when it is you know, non paid and done by mothers? Mm -hmm. So uh, so I think I I from the interview I suspect the first point is rather big, but also secondly Japanese domestic work activity might may be more complex than the U.S. because of the smaller highs and tidying is very uh, you know personalized not not. Uh, 
not standardized. And also we have so much different dishes at home, Chinese, Western, Japanese. The shape of dishes too are even very, very varied in Japan. And also uh, when we look at technological difference or digital competitiveness ranking, business agility, Japan is very low, use of and analysis big data, Japan is, Japan is very low. So there are some places where Japanese technology is high. However, in this respect, maybe, maybe there, there is technology advantage difference too as well. Uh, we don't know, but I, I think it is important to point this out uh, 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 for, the, for, the, for, the, uh, for the engineering and um, uh, community in Japan to, to, to have more interest in the domestic automation. By the way, this is uh, using uh, the uh, time use study of two countries and activity ratio, that is whether you do any, any cooking, for example, in a day. And in, in UK, uh, the, this is female, uh, about 80% does the cooking, 72% said that they do the cooking in Japan. And I was surprised that 54% of UK male that said that they would do cooking and 15% said, yes. Could you clarify um, what, the, what was the question that generated these percentages? Uh, we call it activity ratio. Right. That's whether you do any, it's, any. it's not ours, it's not ours, whether you do any cooking in, a in day, an average day. Average day, okay, thanks. So, uh, so uh, ours are, are a different thing, but, uh, right. yeah. but, but for, for cleaning too, the activity ratio of UK meals is higher compared with Japanese meals. So, so maybe uh, UK meal have more, some, some kind of understanding of domestic work than the Japanese males. Well, uh, so preliminary conclusions. The first is the, the, the Delphi survey's um, prediction of five year and 10 year automation. Though the automation was very varied, you know, uh, childcare much lower, adult care lower, whereas shopping much higher prediction and cooking and laundry in the middle. And also there was, there was a variation in between gender and also there was variation between uh, fields of expertise. And this is some addition. We used, this, this is ongoing research. We used this Delphi survey to consumer survey and asked whether you would want to use automation of domestic task at the price that was predicted and at the uh, automation ratio that was predicted. And this is that we have a very wide price range. Uh, and this is at the lower range of the prediction. And this was surprising to me, but for males, uh, those, those in the, age group of 65 and 74 was very willing to use the cooking and dishwashing and cleaning and adult care and house maintenance and service use. I think this is because, uh, well, the engineers and um, scientists at their prime and young age is not engaging in domestic work, but at retirement, many males face the fact that they have to do these domestic tasks and they have high need of automated devices. So this is another important reason why Japanese companies should target domestic automation, work automation. And uh, this was different from females. Females, uh, uh, the, the, the demand was higher for prime age when they are having their children. So, uh, so I will go to the next one, the consumer experiments. Would one use outs outsourcing at different wage hours and predictions, Binet survey? What we did was we asked around 4,500 males and females separately about cooking and cleaning each. 
What we would like to see is in Japan, wife must be engaged in domestic work. Would a wife choose not to do domestic work and let her husband, robot, or human help do the job? Should she have high hourly wage than that of husband and longer, longer work hours than that of husband? This is a hypothetical situation. And would one respond differently to the cost and productivity of human helps to lot robots and apps? And would one prefer oneself or spouse to human help or robots and apps? And what we did was divided, we, we asked something like this. The survey is about outsourcing of domestic work and your decision-making. You are in the future world. Imagine that there are various technologies such as robots apps that automatically perform housework and care work. They can make home cooked meals like you normally you make. In this world, you can you can cook yourself or let it be done by others. An example of the cooking is as follows, and we list. And then we ask three scenarios to each respondent. And each respondent say, well, adds like, assume that you're in the following environment, which may be different from your actual environment. Imagine what you would like to do in that case. Your life, you work 40 hours a week, an hourly wage of 5,000 yen. Spouse work eight hours a week with an hourly wage of 750 yen. Your youngest child is 20 years old, 12 years old. Your elderly relatives needs regular care. Do you understand the above? And we check. And then in the next page, we repeat what we said before. And we ask that now you're preparing a meal. You can cook by yourself or instead doing it by yourself. The cost of productivity of delegating the first 30 minutes as, is as follows. And you say, Robert, the apps cost 300 yen and saves you 20 minutes of cooking time. Cook yourself. Your cooking time doesn't change. Hire a cook costs 100 yen and saves you 100 minutes of cooking time. Spouse zero yen saves you 10 minutes of cooking time. This is example. This is just example. Uh, it varies. We have uh, much variation in your wage, in spouse wage, in the spouse wage, our productivity of spouse, productivity of robots and human, the price as well. And we looked at how, how the, how, what was, was their choice. This is their actual choice. May, who does your housework at home? Well, uh, mainly wife. Uh, female answer is mainly myself. Uh, the, the answer of husband is lower, but they said mainly their spouse. Same for uh, childcare. But the vignette experiment showed that they, they would choose oneself. 40% said that they would choose themselves. Oh, this is cleaning and cooking. And, and uh, men really did not say that they would choose spouse that much. Well, clean, cooking a bit spouse is higher. But uh, many also accepted robots. The exception, acceptance of robots was higher for cleaning than cooking. And many did not like higher human that much. Mm -hmm. This is the result of our vignette survey. The, the pr productivity and the price is about the same for, uh, uh, for human or uh, for uh, robot. And we use the linear probability model and multinomial logic, uh, logic model. And we regress it by on wage, spousal wage, work hour, spousal work hour, and relatively productivity in price of robot device and uh, human and your spouse. And I will show you the result that adds crossed with gender, whether the the, the reply was different between males and females. And also I will show the result of multinomial logic model, which you would choose. The linear model will just ask, will just choose, look at the choice of Robert. And this is the result for, for linear probability model for using robots for cleaning with cross terms for females. Okay. Um, well, this orange shows that uh, as expected, if you they, they are all what you expect. And this yellow is where the female response was statistically different from male. That is with like, if you are, if you work hour it's long, you're more likely to use robot. But if you are female, you act more 
to the longer work hours. So if you have longer work hours, if you are female, you would like to use robot more than male. So th this is for, for both male and female effect, and this is female effect added. For wage, there was no significant difference between male and female. And as expected, if you have your wage is high, you would like Robert to use Robert. If your spousal wage is high, you would like to use Robert, then, then ask your spouse to do it. And if your work hour is high, you would like Robert to do it. Same for spousal uh, hours. But and if you have elderly care, you would like to use Robert more than when you don't have it. Robot price is high, then you don't want to use it. And female, it's more responsive. If the, if the robot is expensive, female are more not wanting to use it. And uh, productivity is the same. Uh, females are more responsive and human health service as well. So uh, uh, what was not significant was spousal productivity. It's not that spousal productivity that you ask your spouse to do it. It's, it's different from productivity, maybe. It may be a preference. Uh, so, uh, and this is the result of the multinomial logic analysis of a queen in Guinness. Whether you hire robot, you, you let spouse do, you let hi, you hire human, as compared with do it yourself. And we find that females are more likely to hire robot or let spouse do the job on, on this hypothetical situation than males. Uh, so they are more likely to, to not to do them themselves when all the variables are controlled. And uh, the own wage, if they increase, you, you are more likely to use robot, spouse, a human, and work hour, the same. And spousal wage, uh, if your spousal wage is high, you are less likely to let spouse do the job. And the effect of cost of robot is just about the same of effect of cost of human hire. And the, uh, the effect of higher productivity robot is just about the same as a human productivity uh, response. And as when the spouse productivity is high, they will reduce the use of human hire and hire robot. But the reduced reduction of human hire is more than for robot, maybe, though the, the, the uh, statistical significance is lower. So um, in, in this study, uh, well, but, but the base preference differs. The, 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 the reaction is kind of about the same, but, but the base, re, base preference is that you, 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 you hire robot than hire human. Okay, so what we found to wrap up, well, uh, this is still ongoing research, so we, we may have much room to, to improve the result, but in Japan, Wife mostly engaged in domestic work. However, if wife had higher wage or longer work hour than husband or vice versa, in the Vinet experiment, we found that male and female respondents responded in about the same manner for husband and for wife, though wife was keener on work hours and productivity of alternative devices as well as the price of alternative devices. Though human help was not preferred than robot use, the response to the price and productivity was about the same for robot and human service. Female respondent preferred to use robot and let spouse do the domestic work over oneself or human help as compared with male respondents with the same background variables. Uh, explanatory, explanatory variables. For further research, we intend to look at cross effect of gender values and difference between cooking and cleaning. Um, and implications and limitations. Well, change in employment practice that closes gender wage gap by increasing more flexibility in working hours for both males and females may spark a large change in the Japanese domestic work share of the younger generations. Not mostly wife that does domestic tasks to the stage where husbands and the use of robot apps have higher share, 
from our vignette experiment. But this is just vignette experiment. Maybe they don't get married if your husband is so low earning, so low earning. But anyways, a vignette shows that there is room for some change for younger generation. Uh, devices for domestic work automation be on high demand with the rise in elderly population and with the rise in labor participation of females. Japanese R&D companies may have good business chance if targeted well, as retired elderly males are one of the population with high demand for domestic work saving devices. The results have, could have changed if we worded the vignette differently. We did not try to intentionally include any vignette that may reflect underlying values or judgment. If implicit values are included, vignette might have shown that some values still may have strong power in actual household division of labor. We may need to explore more, more on this aspect. We can explore as first step by looking at gender values that we have as background variables. So this is the end of my talk. Thank you. Wow, <laughs> that was a lot of information. Um, I wanna make a few comments and then I'll turn to our first um, uh, question from one of the associates. And there's already um, a question from the chat as well. And I have questions, but I think I'll save my questions for a little later because I wanna give everyone a chance to um, contribute. But my comments are, this is quite, amazing research to me because partly because it's related to so many different streams of research literature, which Professor Nagase certainly touched on. Um, the future of work literature, as she said, um, has, you know, very much taken on this topic of uh, the likely impact of, of AI and robots on paid work. It's been a very hot topic um, for labor economists. But as Professor Nagase said, there's been almost no discussion of you know, automation, um, possible further automation within the home and whether people would be open to it or not um, and what are the conditions that would um, you know, affect their openness. And of course, um, Professor Nagase and her colleagues are looking at the, also the comparison between men's openness to um, automation in the home and women's openness, which is very, very interesting. Um, uh, Professor Nagase, you know, in the first few minutes of her talk, very nicely, compactly summarized um, the major changes in women's labor force participation in Japan in recent years. The fact that many wives still limit their labor force participation and earnings um, at a, to a point where um, the tax system is most favorable, treats the couple most favorably. Um, and that the tax system has been a major um, point of debate over many years um, in the Japanese government, especially you know, LDP members. Um, and probably the most important change I would, I would say um, in the female labor force was um, Nobuko's slide that showed that now nearly half of female university graduates with very young children are continuing in the labor force. So they may take, they do take maternity and childcare leave, but they come right back to work. So the famous M-shaped M curve of female labor force participation um, is weakening um, somewhat in Japan and particularly because of the um, employer's use of female university graduate labor, which they very much need because of the labor shortage. Um, so I would just kind of summarize the first part of her talk in that way. And uh, she showed us the results of two different studies, the Delphi survey and a vignette study. Um, and uh, I have lots of, lots of comments um, about and questions about um, these. Um, the focus, I would also say, the focus on unpaid work um, has been, it's been a topic among labor economists for a long time, starting with Gary Becker and the new household economics. But the value of unpaid work, in, at least in my reading of the literature, 
has been particularly um, emphasized by feminist, feminist economists, of which there aren't very many, <laughs> but um, feminist economists have long struggled with, you know, how do we attach a price to unpaid labor? Um, and it's very, very difficult to do. So this is also a really innovative thing that Nobuko and her team are looking at. How do you value unpaid work? Um, Japanese women do about five times as much unpaid work as Japanese men on average. And that's the highest um, along with Korean men in all of the OECD countries. So it's the biggest gender disparity. So it's a very, very relevant topic for Japan. If, if again, female labor force participation is desired by the government and if more babies are <laughs> hoped for by the government. Um, looking inside the household at the distribution of unpaid work between men and women is very, very important. So I'd like to turn um, to our associates. And the first question today will um, come from Yasuhiro Arai, who's associate professor at Kochi University. And his research project this year is about patents, patent pledges, why corporations make patents available to the public or not. So can I speak? Yeah. <laughs> thank you for Go the kind introduction. Uh, thank you for your fascinating, fascinating presentation. I strongly hope uh, my unpaid work will be used for the <laughs> Yeah, I really hope so. <laughs> I have some comments and questions. So to promote the female involvement in the work, uh, you said it is essential to automate the uh, unpaid work. It's a uh, uh, which one can to do, right? So however, it's a large gender income gap in the uh, apples, mm -hmm. as you indicated. Uh, the robots or services could be purchased to automate the work, uh, primarily carried out by men, right? So, this, I think the similar story was introduced in the book, the very famous book, More, More Work for Mother. Uh, the, this is an old book published in 1985, I think. Uh, recently, it is translated in Japanese. Mm -hmm. uh, the title is Okasa wa Isobashiku Naru Bakari. In 2000. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this book shows that the industri industrialization in the early 20th century in the United States, uh, the, this reduces the amount of housework that men have to do and increase the amount of housework that women have to do. So I think this study is also important in concerning the uh, policies to, to encourage the purchase of robots or services uh, that women have to do. And uh, yeah, also the unpaid work for us uh, may be paid work for someone else. Right? Yeah, take an example as you know, a dry cleaner. So usually we iron our clothes, and uh, so of course without any fees, right? <laughs> but uh, uh, for, for example, the automation for the prices of the dry cleaner, the service of the dry cleaner. We can easily ask the dry cleaner to ask the uh, laundry and the ironing, right? So this means that our unpaid work changes to the paid work for dry cleaner. So I think there are strong relationship between the unpaid work for us and the paid work for uh, other people. So it is an exciting, to, an exciting topic to consider the, the relationship. Mm. And uh, yeah, I have just one question. That, how does the automation of these unpaid work uh, affect, uh, for example, marriage rate, uh, fertility rate, and then divorce rate? Right? Especially, I'm interested in divorce rate. Right? Yeah, in several existing studies on how this figure uh, were affected when uh, appliances or services were introduced in the past, it will, it will be interesting to contrast them. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, when I started this research, mm -hmm. what I was most interested in is to make the business busy, busy uh, time of female in the prime child raising years. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to build up their career, they have to care for children, mm -hmm. and the time is so constrained. And so if there is good, some kind of automation or human help or anything that will ease this time will be something very important. 
may affect fertility, may affect female career. Mm -hmm. So that was my main motive for wanting to look at the possibility where the digital AI or other devices can help. But as you said, in 1980s in the US and also in 1990s in Japan, the devices that was produced by the companies was mostly centered in Japan for maybe full-time housewives, mm -hmm. not for female to work continue, but for full-time housewives to make better quality home goods, such as bread, homemade bread, <laughs> uh, or uh, uh, recently, uh, uh, fan uh -huh. without no need for cleaning. So, <laughs> so for working female, it's, you know, you can ask, hey, once a year, but for full-time housewife, it's a really nasty work that they don't they have to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, all the research, I mean, R&Ds in Japan are more headed for full-time housewife and not for working females, mm -hmm. which I think is a big problem. Mm -hmm. And so my research, so I, I would like to, to have some output so that our Japanese research community will head for something else, then, then helping better, higher quality, homemade cooking. <laughs> and, and also you, you pointed out that older males yeah. would be open, to, quite open to yeah. further automation. Um, I'll just add um, one thing to what Professor Nagase just said, um, in the, which is related to the use of humans versus robots. Um, yeah, to me, it was very, very interesting and not surprising that the Japanese respondents um, had a preference for automation over, over human beings in the household. I assume they were thinking of people coming into the household. And in the US context, something that's really an interesting fact is women now, married women with children now spend less time on housework than they did 20 years ago. Men also spend less time on housework and both sexes spend more time with children. So even though married women in the US are working at a much higher rate with married women with young children than they used to, they're spending more time with children. And I suspect a lot of this, it's in the upper middle class and they can afford to have someone come in and clean house and make meals and do the laundry and so forth. Um, probably not so much due to automation, but due to the fact that in the United States, especially in major cities, we have very large immigrant communities. Um, oftentimes immigrants, immigrant women who don't speak very good English, but they can take care of the home. And Americans are generally quite willing to you know, have people come into their homes. So, I, I would be really interested to see this vignette study in the United States, because I think the trade-off between automation and a human being would, would be very different than in Japan. Um, we have a question from Susan Farr um, from the online audience. We have a big online audience. Susan says, she would like you to explain more clearly what you actually mean about the automation of domestic chores. So she says, for instance, how could gardening become automated? <laughs> this is the American context, people with large yards. How does cooking dinner become automated? Does that mean more use of takeout food? Um, in other words, what is people's vision of what automation would actually mean you know, in day-to-day -day life? That's your question. I see Susan on the screen, so you could also invite her to talk if you want. Uh, if Susan would like to talk, she can. <laughs> no, uh, Mary summarized it very well. Hi, Susan. <laughs> okay, my, my answer to that, uh, that is one of the questions that I often get, and we discussed with Oxford team very much. Um, we try to think of automation in the most widest way, 
for example, in Delphi survey, we said like not only ironing, robot ironing, but material that means no ironing is thought of as automation. Mm -hmm. If it is above what we have. Mm -hmm. So we 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 in the Phoenix survey, we, we said, please look at, think of automation in the widest way that you can think of. And uh, in the vignette survey, we didn't specify what automation is, but we said that suppose that human hire or robot can make as good meal as you, but we made the time difference. Like for the 30 minutes, what you can do, sometimes you made robot can do 100 minutes worth or a human hire 100 minutes worth or just 10 minutes worth. So we, and price different. That's only how we made it this way. But, but by the way, long automation, we find that there is automated long cutting device. Yes, there is. <laughs> uh, but uh, in Japan, because of, of the, uh, the long I mean, uh, garden is small, and <laughs> at least, um, maybe it will be more difficult to have the automation. Uh, cooking in actuality, in Japan, uh, there is a, a hit of hot, uh, kotokuku by shark, which, <laughs> which you just put in ingredients and then two hours later it's ready. Mm -hmm. So, and you can get the right recipe from the Wi-Fi for a new recipe and just put it and it's done. So, but, but uh, if, if we really think of higher automation, maybe we have to really change the housing, the dish shape of the dish or, you know, the way how we eat meals. So it, it, it may, may, must require a very big project of changing the way how people navigate within the house or how people make food. And that can be perhaps incorporated in a nursing home, for example, in the first, as a first uh, stage, I don't know. Thank you for your question, Suzanne. Okay, we'll turn back to the in-person audience and if you could state your name and affiliation. Sure. Um, yeah, thank you so much for this wonderful talk. Um, learned a lot. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Trevor Inserti. I'm a postdoctoral fellow of the program on US Japan relations. Um, and first, uh, just a quick comment on kind of automation uh, that just popped in my head as you were speaking, was just noting that even some automated technologies that we think of often, like dishwashers and say mm -hmm. clothes dryers, just have much lower rates of use. Um, in, in Japan overall. Right. Um, and it's kind of going to a question of mine, as I noticed in your vignette experiment, um, looking at the linear probability model results, it looked like the coefficient for spousal productivity was not significant, but the interaction with gender looks to be significant and negative, which if I'm interpreting that correctly, means that women are more sensitive to how efficient their partners are at household chores than men are. <laughs> um, and so I'm wondering if that kind of ties back to automation in the sense that maybe you don't have higher rates of automated use because mm -hmm. men are not particularly sensitive to how efficient their spouses are at doing household work, whereas maybe if it was you know, the other way around, you might have higher adoption of AI because there'd be more sensitivity to increasing that efficiency. Yeah, maybe I should, it's a very good question. And I, I, I think I need to explore more in the data about how the spousal effect is because the spouse, spouse was the only, uh, only uh, coefficient which was not in the right way that I thought of. Mm -hmm. So maybe I could have some cross term with gender values or cross term with who is doing the actual work at now, right. or maybe cross term with the volume of household chart because we ask how many hours you and your spouse spend. Um, so we may we really can look at the volume or food answer or the gender values. And it's a very good question. Thank you. I, I, I will explore in that respect. Thank you. There are a number of online questions and we're getting very close to the hour limit. Are there other questions? Uh, yes. Yeah, um, hi. Um, thank you very much for the-, uh, for the Could you introduce oh, yourself? Um, let me do it. I'm uh, uh, affiliated with the uh, US Japan. Oh, okay. 
Uh, thank you very much for, for this um, very, very interesting um, presentation. I'm just wondering, um, your uh, experiment basically uh, assumes a very household um, and their responses to automation as well. Um, and but uh, 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 you know, the rate of marriage have been have been going down, so there are more you know, singles. Um, and I'm wondering to what extent would the would the uh, would the result that you just shared with us apply to to singles? Would they be more open to um, to automation? Would they be less so? Um, and also whether um, your results would um, differ. Depended on respondents' level of education. Oh, that's that's a good, good one that I have to explore. I haven't looked into education yet, so I will do that. Uh, and uh, for singles, we were we are actually planning to do the same survey to singles, but I'm kind of not too sure if it's worth the money, <laughs> even though UK is going to do that for the singles as well. That's why we're doing. In Japanese case, about 60% of non-marrieds are living with their parents. And that's different from UK or US. And in those cases, many times mothers are doing household work. Mm -hmm. And if they are, you are living by yourself, you are often go to the like, convenience store or you know, get food outside. And I'm not too sure how much of these domestic chore demands are for non-marrieds. So that's maybe we will do a very small side survey for, but I, I, it's still, we have to still think about it. Thank you for your question. Mm -hmm. Okay, are we, may I ask a question? Are we able to keep the online questions to give to Nobuko yes. later? Okay, I, my apologies to the online audience because there are additional questions from you, um, but we've reached the hour. Um, so we will pass on your questions to Professor Nagase. Um, and I'm sure there are more questions in this audience too, but, but it's 103. So, um, Let's thank Professor Nagase for a very, very stimulating presentation. And clearly there are a lot of interesting and important research directions to go for the rest of your career. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity and the great questions and comments. Thank you so much. I like this. I like this. <laughs> uh, so next Monday, um, the November 7th seminar, we discussed briefly earlier, and it's a panel, um, associates panel um, seminar. So everyone is, of course, invited to attend. Thank you. Thank you.